So, do you even know who this is? Claus. <laughs> His name is Claus? Yeah. What do you think his real name is? Weapon X. You knew that. I'm impressed. I thought you would call him Wolverine. Well, I love I've, you. I've been reading up on your on your book. I love you more than you can imagine right now. Nice. You just miss, skipped a beat. Your heart. No. You're it, so excited. No, that, that, that was probably because I'm flatlining from all the beer I uh, ate yesterday. Ate? Yo, I ate that shit. What the fuck? I, I was just looking at you. Is that all right? Look at the camera. Okay. All right. As the Extreme channel is pushing towards 50,000 subscribers, these are just a few of the statues we are giving away on the journey there. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Hey everybody, if you're new to this channel, then you're unaware that this Age of Apocalypse Weapon X or Wolverine or Claws, Claws statue yes. was actually painted by my wife, and this is the first reveal of it. So if you want to know what all that's about, go ahead and check out this video right here. This video right here details the origins of this statue. It talks about the price, the sculpt, things we're not going to cover today. But it came as a kit only or an unpainted statue. Now in the statue world, if a statue comes unpainted or as a kit, it's a big problem for collectors for a number of reasons. Number one is there's not a lot of people out there who actually paint this. So availability is scarce, scarce. Scarce. It's tiny. It's not what she said. <laughs> it's tiny. Availability it is. is tiny. If you find a good painter out there, not only do they cost a lot of money, but you have to ship it across the country or maybe across the world. And it takes years sometimes years. for you to get your statue back. I think I still have some with some other painters. You don't know? I don't know. I'd have to check. I have a, I have a spreadsheet. Oh, good. I... I, it's possible I have statues I don't know about. All right, so as I said, this is actually a version of Wolverine from a comic called Age of Apocalypse, where Apocalypse has taken over the world. Magneto actually leads the X-Men. Wolverine, who goes by Weapon X, or when he's in this house, you call him what? Claws. Claws has actually lost an arm to Cyclops, who is actually his adversary because he is fucking Jean Grey. With that being said, today we're gonna do a review on the paint and kind of talk oh. about how you did it. Now, sure. a lot of people wanna watch like some work in progress videos of her painting it. It's and boring. She's made a ton of them, but the problem is it's probably like 40 to 80 hours of footage that I would physically have to go through and edit. And unfortunately, I just don't have time for that because I'm too busy what am I doing? On your tablet. On my tablet. I'm too busy working, making you money. Ah. So with that being said, uh, I don't know, where should we start? Should we talk about like how you learn to paint statues? Because this isn't her first statue she's painted. First thing she did was she actually painted my thing right here. You can check out this video. And she did a really good job. That was my favorite. And then kind of a spoiler, this one might beat that. I like that statue better, but I think the paint job on here is really good. Mm. Which, she doesn't know how I feel about the paint because I've been paint, playing it very close to my chest. Correct. And, and then she, every time I paint something, I'm like, hey, how does this look? And he won't give me any reaction. And then she also painted this Godzilla piece right here, which is a tough piece to paint because it's Godzilla. So that's definitely, of the three you've painted so far, my, my least favorite. favorite. Yeah. Now, she's also done a lot of touch-ups and repaints on some other statues, but I think now, honestly, I think you've graduated. Have I? So, where'd you learn to paint like this? YouTube. YouTube? YouTube. Did you watch my channel? No. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> of course I watched your channel. <laughs> lie. We're not supposed to lie to each other. I know. I know you don't watch my channel because I make jokes at you all the time mm -hmm. and you'd be really mad <laughs> if that happened. That's why I don't watch it. Yeah. So anyway, um, you just we decided one day, hey, she you know sits at home all day and watches TV, according to the kids. Exactly. But also, we must have some magical fairy that you know pays all the bills and does all the laundry and does all the cleaning, and even mows the yard and yep. shovels the driveway. Some magic fairy does that while she sits inside and watches it's not TV. Me. Not me at all. But we decided, you know what? Let's give her a whirl at these because it'll save us literally thousands and thousands yep. of dollars. And as a spoiler, Mrs. X may start taking commissions. We haven't really talked about it yet, but no. do you know what that means? It means people send you statues Obviously. and you paint them. Now, if you're considering doing that, 
Uh, go ahead and email us at mrx at theextremechannel.com. You didn't know I was going to whore you out, did you? I didn't. I whore myself out all the time. I know. But go ahead and email. Now, if you're one of those people who demands perfection, like a tiny millimeter dot under a microscope is bad, don't email us. We don't. do not. We don't want to do business with you. No. And if, if I'm not saying you're a bad person. We just don't want to do business with you. So first of all, let's talk about like art direction. How did we decide the colors you were going to paint him and, and the stuff you decided to go with? I think it was the first, um, maybe it was the artist rendering of it, that the paint okay. that you sent me. Yep. And I liked the color of it. So I went to the store and I tried to find a color similar to it. And then I... Uh, so for his suit or for everything? For his suit. What about like the base here? So obviously this is a black museum style base on yes. the bottom, the, the sub base here. But why did you decide to go uh, gray? Because I know some other people, they decided instead of making it concrete, they went sand. Why did you decide? Yeah, I think every one that you had sent me before the sand ones, I had done in, in the gray already. I hadn't okay. seen a sand one. Okay. Now, I like I like the concrete better personally because Age of Apocalypse is like end of the world and there's bombings and things like that. It's mm. not like he's on a sandy beach somewhere, so I, I yeah. dig that. Now, regarding um, Claws and his uniform, other than the artist rendering mm -hmm. from the initial statue, what other reference material did you use? Uh, your book. My book. Your book, yeah. So I have the omnibus of Age of Apocalypse by X-Men. A lot of the comic books put together into a bigger Many. book. Lots and lots. Lots and lots. So that's why how you knew his name was Weapon X, right? It is. So he goes by Weapon X instead of Wolverine, and then eventually he becomes Weapon Omega, and he actually is Apocalypse's number one man, which, as you can imagine, means he's a bad guy. Did you know that? No. You didn't read that far? I actually just looked at the pictures. So you didn't read any of it? No. All right. Fair enough. So you went with his traditional suit colors. Yeah. So some one thing you talked to me earlier is you noticed his belt was yellow. Like yellow. The, the X-Men symbol on the front was yellow, right? I uh, know the actual around him belt was yellow. Okay. In the comic books. So why did you decide to go red? Because all the pictures you had sent me prior to that were red. So you're blaming me. I'm not. I mean, I can change it. I like the red much better. And that's the great uh, thing. If there is something on here I don't like, she can actually change it. Yeah. So I got to say, there's... Your last few statues you painted, the tough areas were human skin tone. Mm -hmm. and Which those... I didn't have any human skin tone in the... No, but on touch-ups you've done. On touch-ups oh, of yeah, other yeah. statues. Eyes and teeth. Mm -hmm. And I got to say that I think the eyes and teeth are ten times better and the skin tone is three times better. Hmm. You don't like the skin tone? No, I think it's done very well. Oh, gotcha. It's partially the lighting, too. Yeah, it looks different in every light, so. All right. So let's talk about the uh, base here. Before you paint a statue, what do you do to get it ready? Well, first of all, I uh, wash it. Like with in the shower or oh, with your tongue? <laughs> okay. <laughs> kind of feral and cat-like. He's very feral and cat-like. Yeah. No, um, I... I you... <laughs> <laughs> That's gross. I'm sorry. It... No, I soap, soap and water, and I take a toothbrush and, you know. <laughs> My toothbrush? Your toothbrush. All right. Yeah, because you have to get all the mold release off of it. Otherwise, the paint won't stick. Okay. Yeah. So after you've mold, washed like, it. Mold, like moldy. You moldy, know? moldy, moldy, moldy. Yeah. After you've washed it, yeah. what's next? I got to let it dry. <laughs> We're not, th this isn't going to be like a 50-hour video, okay? You don't need oh, to say. Oh, it's not? Then I moved this piece to here and I set okay. it down to well, dry. I mean, so after you washed it, yeah. it obviously dries. Yeah. Did you use a blow dryer to dry it? No, air. air. Air dry. Like. <laughs> yes, I All blew right. it dry. Okay. Then after it's dry, what'd you do next? Um, then I usually give it a prime coat. Like I use primer. Like Optimus Prime? Plus. So uh, primer is something you buy at the store. It is, yeah. A can of primer and I just spray it down. Spray it on? Okay. Yeah. Every piece. Then after that, let's talk about the base. First thing you yeah. did is you painted it, the, the bottom part first? Actually, I painted the top part first. Okay. So, so yeah. did you use one color of gray or multiple colors of gray, or is there other colors in there? Um, yeah, so I started with like a like a base coat of gray color, and then I um, added some darker gray, lighter gray, black highlights, and then I went through with like a sand, like a tan color. 
Okay. And what's interesting is if you look close, you really can't see the sand tan color in there, but it does accentuate the gray. And another interesting fact is the unpainted kit, if you guys recall, was actually gray. It was. So did you really do anything with it or did you just leave it? Um, I actually did a lot with it. Okay. I mean, I mean, I can tell. I mean, maybe I'm, you. I'm, I'm just giving you shit, lady. Untrained eyes. Why do you keep touching me? You know I, I don't like to be touched. I haven't touched you like this. Your hand is cold as hell, too. It's not. Oh! Ah! <laughs> so... Um, so then after that, you decided to uh, paint the bottom here, the, what we call the museum style, kind yeah. of the sub base. Yeah. I use my paintbrush for that. Really? Like a roller? Yeah. Okay. My four inch, uh, paintbrush that I use, like, to touch up the walls. It's only four inches? That's what she said. Was that a joke? <laughs> oh, ouch. <laughs> All right, so now let's, let's talk about Wolverine's uh, blue color. Now, yeah. it's very shiny, very sparkly. It is sparkly. How'd you do that? Um, that was the color of paint it was. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay, why'd you choose that? Um, because... Was he sparkly in the comics? No. I mean, I can tone him down, but I... I no, like I think it. it looks great, actually. I actually like the extra... Uh huh. Yep. Just a little gives it a little sparkle. Yeah. A little shine. It is a little shine. Now, for his uniform, it, was it was this difficult? Did you just use that color? Did you put any other shading or mixes in there? Um. So I used the color that I bought, and then I added some uh, black to it. Okay. Because I thought it was a little too uh, light. Now use an airbrush for that part. I right? did use an airbrush. Okay. All, but I didn't. I used my hand uh, hand painted the black. The black on, on his, his boots shoes. here was yeah. hand-painted? Yes. Now, when you originally airbrushed it, did you paint that the blue color and then paint it over that Correct. black? Okay. Correct. Now, when you uh, painted over it black, did you use anything to, like, painter's tape? Or how do you do that? I, I mean, uh, I know, no. but they may not know. Oh, no. I just freehand it. I don't know. Yeah. I freehand so that. So you freehanded that? Yeah. Okay. What about, like, his uh, belt and the patches, the red patches on his back? Uh, so his belt comes off. Okay. So it's it's by itself. Um, so I just airbrushed that guy, and then I hand-painted the um, black lines around the X there. Now with his, his belt here, it actually looks like a leathery texture. Is that from the sculpt or something you did with the paint? It's the sculpt. You could have taken credit for it. I could have, but I mean, I didn't want to take away from the sculptor. I take credit from everything you do. Oh. Awesome. The only reason she paints so well is from my coaching and direction. Exactly. What about kind of these patches on the back? Yeah, so Is I... that the same color of red? It is the same color as red of his belt. Masked off the uh, suit color to get the red. So you you used Silly Putty? Yeah. On the suit? On the suit, yeah. Okay, is that, and then did you hand paint this or? No, I airbrushed it. Okay, so you airbrushed that? Yeah. So that was a lot of putty. It was kind of a lot of putty. Do you play with the Silly Putty? I don't. Oh, uh, Silly, yeah. As an adult, Silly Putty isn't very entertaining. <laughs> as a kid, that, that shit was the bomb. And some, I think some similar comments can be said about his gloves, but the, the difference here is you do have a buckle with a uh, silver, silver la yeah. latch on it, uh -huh, I guess yeah. you would call it, or buckle. Buckle, yeah. So was that hand painted? It was. Okay. The silver was. And same thing with where his claws are coming out? Yeah. So what's, what, what's great here is I think you picked an interesting color. It does contrast the claws a little bit. The claws are actually metal, um, so they're not as shiny. But I think it looks really good. It flows very nicely. It's not too much of a difference. And I think this is more apparent on the arm that he had cut off. So this is the arm that Cyclops cut off. That's why they, they're enemies. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see it. It's more of, it is a silver metallic color, but it's not as metallic as the claws that came Correct. in. Now, was that intentional or did you want to make it match or why did you decide? Well, I kind of want it to be matchy matchy, but um, I didn't want to use like chrome. I agree. I think that would have been too much. I think what you have on his arm is, is absolutely the perfect color. And he has a bunch of arm switch out options, if Correct. you guys recall. So the first one is the one we're talking about right here. Mm -hmm. And then also kind of the nub, nub. which essentially you, you painted the exact same way. I did, yeah. And then he has the, his, you can actually still have his arm before he lost it. Now you don't have to put the claws in, so there's kind of holes there, which looks a little weird, but it's another display option. Or here's what it looks like with the claws. Now let's talk about the skin, starting with the arms. You know, uh, the skin tone is something that's very difficult to do as a painter from what I understand, yes? Yeah, well, everybody's skin color is different. All right, so the skin tone is very difficult to do. 
And, and uh, I think he did a very nice job. And if you look really close on here, this is where it looks really good. You can see not only the veins, is that some, how'd you highlight that blue on there? Did you paint, hand paint the blue and then spray over it? Yeah, that was after I did a base coat of uh, skin color, I went in and made it the veins really, really dark. And then you sprayed like over it. Like a purple, it. blue, green color. And then you sprayed over it again? Many, many times. Yeah, and you can also even see like some flesh tones in some of these. Was that intentional? Like flesh almost tones. some red? Oh, yeah, yeah. I highlighted s certain spots with like a reddish accent color. Are you surprised I could see that? I figured you could. Yeah. And then let's talk about his hair. You know, Wolverine's arm hair is always kind of controversial. So part of this was sculpted in here. And how you you decided to paint on that? And you didn't go too heavy, which I like because some Wolverines are just too hairy on their arms. So how'd you paint the arm hair? Um, I dry brush that. What does that mean? Uh, so I take a paintbrush that's dry, and I get some paint, and I get like almost all the paint off. So there's just very, very little, and then you just like stroke. So like, yeah, like this. And you just hope it looks good. Yeah. Good job. Nicely Thanks. done. So uh, then the last thing is the portraits, which is the portraits the hardest part? It is. Okay. So we have a number of different portraits. Let's actually start with the um, new age hairstyle is what I'm going to call it. And you on this one, you actually painted eyes, right? Yeah. I think this is actually my favorite. I would agree. So it's not my favorite sculpt, but I think the paint job on it is actually my favorite. So mm. he, he has the red lines on his forehead, which are on every single uh, Correct. Sculpt. How'd Which you paint those? I was gonna leave those off, but in in the comic book, all of them have it on it. So. So is that hand painted? Yes. Okay. After the fact, after everything's done. After everything else. Yeah. So I sure hope I got them right. Now talk to us about the uh, eyes. You hand painted those eyes as well, right? Yeah, I did. And I think that that is your the best job on eyes you have done. Oh, personally. really? Yep. Those are oh, done very nice. well. Oh, nice. And. I noticed in a lot of these, you also added some rosy color in the cheeks. That's, I did. Is that underneath the... It's actually um, toward the top of it. I um, Toward the top of the layers. Yeah. So I just took some um, red paint and thinned it way down and then like rubbed it on there and then took it off. So it almost like stained the, the skin. So you're good at rubbing things. I am really good at rubbing things. <laughs> All right, so mo moving on. Thank you. <laughs> um, hit, talk to us about his. So all of these characters had teeth showing, which teeth Correct. are the hardest to do. And which I, I think these are my best teeth. I agree. You know, they're not very glossy, which we do see a lot. So there's which not really. I can put more gloss on them. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of a moist effect that you typically see, but his mouth isn't open, so the, I'm I'm okay not seeing that. But I can see it on this one, the glossiness. Like if you turn it a certain way, see that? Yeah. No. But even even like the gums look great. Tiny. I don't even know how you paint those gums like that. Do we have a paintbrush with that fine of a yeah. bristle? Yeah, and then I just get really close. Okay. So let's talk about the hair on this one. Oh, yeah. Now, the hair on this one's very different. Not only the sculpt, but you added the blue streaks, which you I didn't did. do on the other one. Why'd you do that? Um, I just thought maybe for a little extra flavor, you know? I mean, I can do it to all of them if you like it. I mean... Yeah, I do. I, I think I like it, but I think I like it without it as well. Yeah, so. I just figured variety. So let's look at the ugly portrait. This one, you didn't actually have to draw uh, pupils on the eyes. Correct. So that makes it easier because he's, he's in his uh, rage mode. Yeah, which I saw in the comic book. Some of the eyes were red and some of the eyes were yellow. Yeah, so it's, it's inconsistent mainly because you have different, different uh, illustrators oh. doing it. But this one, you can really see some of the stuff I was talking about in the gums, and you can really see those mm -hmm. rosy red cheeks. And yeah. how'd you do the hair? Did you use putty so there's a clean uh, line between the hair and the face? Because it's no. pretty clean. You just hand painted that. I hand painted the black or the hair. Okay. After the after the face was done. And the rest of the hair on this one is actually pretty uh, pretty solid black, but it's not too monotonous. So you stayed good with the sculpt. It, it's not like it was just caked on there. Oh yeah. And then the last portrait, kind of a combination between those two put together. A lot of the same things. I mean, really a lot of the same strategies and techniques, yes? Yeah, I like the hair sculpt on this one. Like, that's I saw a lot of this in the comic book. Yep. 
No, and I think, and that's actually kind of what we're looking at right now. This is probably the most accurate to the Age of Apocalypse, even though, like we said, there's a few different illustrators and variants. So overall, I have to tell you, if I was going to give this, the, the probably the one criticism I would give is uh-huh. some of the arm hair. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of different, but I don't know how to do it well. That's the only criticism. It's different? Yeah, it's just just the way it's on there. Maybe it's the color. I don't know. Oh, I used like a brown color because I didn't I didn't think arm hair should be black. Yeah, yeah. No, I I agree. I think it it's still almost too dark because it kind of looks like dirt a little bit. Mm. I think that's my one criticism. So I don't think it's perfect paint, but I would still honestly give this a five out of five, even if you and I weren't you know sharing a bed. Oh. <laughs> that's right so two nights ago we were just sitting there you know get, you know getting ready for bed and yeah. we noticed both of us were on like the one side of the king bed you could have fit like nine people in between us and i was like are you mad at me or something and we couldn't stop laughing and i had my pants on it had nothing to do with <laughs> something like that but yeah so fantastic job very excited um i don't know if we'll take commissions or not but if you're interested let us know and just know that um, she's probably going to screw it up. So I if, probably will. So if you're okay with that, go ahead and email us at mrx at theextremechannel.com. And uh, anything else to say? No. Nee. Nee. <laughs> we will be giving all of these statues away, plus additional ones, at every 5,000 subscriber milestone. To win one of these statues, all you have to do is make sure you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, you've hit that bell notification, and then just drop a comment below. Every 5,000 subscriber milestone, we are going to do a random drawing and pick a random comment and give one of these statues away, plus some additional ones I'm not showing right now. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win. Previously on X-Men. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. Please drop us a like on the way out if you think Mrs. X did a good job. If you think she did a bad job, go uh, eat a bag of dicks. But we really appreciate you guys, so uh, subscribe if you haven't, if you want to see future content about statues and or Mrs. X and me. That me probably will get us less subs, but...